You know, it's in our nature to see angels as beautiful and to see shayateen, to see devils as ugly. And in fact, we often associate that with people around us. So we'll say that she looks like a little angel or that he looks like a devil. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even alludes to in the Quran, that the women in the time of Yusuf alayhi salam, when they saw Yusuf alayhi salam, they said that this is malakun kareem, this is just a beautiful angel. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam as well, when he saw a man whose hair and, and beard were all unkempt and he came to the masjid that way, Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam told him he should comb his hair instead of coming to the masjid looking like a shaitan. So it's only natural that we associate these things. This is just in our fitrah, that angels are beautiful and that devils are ugly. However, we find instances in the Quran and the Sunnah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes angels with a very, very severe, harsh appearance. Now, we have to love them all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًا لِلَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَةً That whoever is an enemy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels and the Rusul and the messengers and Jibreel and Mikal, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an enemy to the disbelievers. So that means we have to love Malik, the keeper of hellfire. We have to love Israfil, who blows the horn. We have to love the two angels that will ask us in the grave. Though we fear them, we have to love them. The keepers of hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them ghiladun shidad, that they are very severe in their appearance. The Prophet وسلم, even when he saw Malik, when he saw you know the keeper of hellfire, Malik, Rasulullah described the frightening appearance. I mean, Malik, the Prophet وسلم, was shocked that he didn't smile, he didn't laugh, he didn't greet the Prophet the way that other angels did. And when Rasulullah asked Jibreel about that, Jibreel said that if he was to smile at anyone, it would be you, but he's never smiled since hellfire has been created. And so even though the Prophet saw him that way, and the keepers of hellfire are severe, and Munkar and Nakir, the two angels that come to us in the grave, have a very frightening appearance, they don't necessarily look that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of making their appearance in a certain way. However, all of them are created from nur, all of them are created from light, and all of them are beautiful. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the appearance to certain people depending on who they are and depending on who those angels are as well. So even with the angel of death when he comes to us and when he comes with his helpers, everyone sees him differently. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us the believer as he's leaving this world, he sees very beautiful faces. The Prophet sallallahu he mentioned to us that when the angel of death comes with his helpers, who come with the kafan, who come with the cloth that would carry the the soul of the believer, they come reeking of musk, of a beautiful smell, a beautiful scent. They're extremely beautiful, extremely comforting in their sight. And as the angel of death approaches, the believer feels a sense of comfort, right? He doesn't feel scared at all. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, as he was passing away, he started to see these angels in the phase that's called al-ihtilaq. Ihtilaq means the presence, the presence of the angels as you're about to leave this world. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he smiled and his face lit up and he said, Marhaban bihadi wujuh. Welcome to these beautiful faces. That clearly don't belong to human beings or jinn. He was delighted because he recognized that these faces were so beautiful that they could not be anything but angels as opposed to the disbelievers, as opposed to corrupt, evil people, the Prophet ﷺ mentions a very frightening appearance that would cause the soul to actually hide within the body and these angels to scream at that soul and to rip it out of the body. May Allah protect us. But that tells you something that Allah Azzawajal can change the appearance based upon who you are. And so if you are a beautiful person, then you will only see beautiful angels. You will never see, you'll never see any angels that would have a frightening appearance. They would only be beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also sometimes allows the angels to come in human appearance. So Jibreel alayhi salam, who's the greatest of them, came in human appearance at times. Allah mentions to us the guests of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When they came to Ibrahim alayhi salam to give him the glad tidings of Ishaq and after Ishaq as well, Ya'qub. Now they still couldn't eat or drink, right? So they, they still couldn't escape that part of the limitation on their desires. And that caused Ibrahim to fear them. But nevertheless, they had a, a human appearance. Likewise, we see the handsome young men that were sent to Lut the people of Lut The same angels, of course, appeared to the people of Lut as handsome young men, as a fitna to them. Maryam السلام, when, she, when she sees Jibreel السلام, Jibreel appeared to her as a complete human being, a beautiful human being. And sometimes even in human form, you know, the angels can come to non people that aren't prophets, people that aren't necessarily receiving any form of divine inspiration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes sends them as a test or as a bushra, as a glad tidings to a person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he mentions to us in a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that there was a man that was visiting a brother of his in a village and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to him on the road. This is not a prophet, just a regular 
man. And the angel said to him in the form of a man, where are you going? And he replied, he said, I'm just going to visit, you know, a brother of mine that lives in such and such village. And the man responded and said, is, you know, do you owe him something? Is there some sort of worldly transaction between you to see if this is truly the only reason he's going to visit him, you know, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the man says, no, I just love him for Allah. That's all. I'm going to visit him because I love him for Allah. So the angel responded in the form of the man, obviously, and said, فَإِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكَ I'm a messenger of Allah that's been sent to you and Allah ahabbak that Allah loves you kama ahabbta the way that you loved your brother so that's a good situation and then we find that sometimes the angels are sent in human form to test people there's a very famous hadith in al-Bukhari where the Prophet sallallahu mentions that uh, there was a blind man a bald man and a leper and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them what it is that they wanted so obviously each one wanted out of out of whatever it is that was hindering their you know hindering them or that was causing them to have a certain appearance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the angel to cure them so the leper the leper was cured from his leprosy the blind man was cured from his blindness the bald man got a divine hair transplant you know the angel rubbed on his head mashallah he had a full head of hair and they were given uh, wealth one was given camels one was given cows one was given sheep then Allah tested them by sending the same angel to them in the form that they used to have so the man that used to be blind saw a blind man and so on and so forth. So they're capable of that as well when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides. And finally, we find Musa alayhi salam. There's a very peculiar hadith with Musa alayhi salam that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi says, and this is an authentic narration, that when the angel of death came to Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam punched him in the face and his eye fell out. Right, and that, that could be literal or just to show the, the impact of the hit of Musa alayhi salam. And the angel went and complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah restored him obviously. And then he came back to Musa alayhi salam explaining who he was. So some of the scholars, some of the commentators, they say that Musa didn't actually know that he was the angel of death because he came in the form of a man. And he thought that he was just someone snooping around his house that just entered into his house. And that's why Musa alayhi salam reacted that way. In any case, we find that they're able to assume many shapes and many forms. Now, a lot of people will say, well, then can I see human angels it's very unlikely and the last thing you should assume if you saw something strange is that you just saw a human angel however Allah knows best it can happen and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're surrounded by the malaika in whatever form they may be